I want to talk about something today. This guy right here. This is my Axe FX3, and it's probably my favorite piece of gear that I own. Now, although it's an amazing piece of gear that does all sorts of different things, it's not going to magically make your tone better. So before you go out and invest in an Axe FX3 because you think it's going to make your tone better, watch this video and see if it's really for you. So you might ask yourself, why am I telling you guys that an Axe FX won't make your tone better? Well, it's because I get tons of comments like this. I want you guys to know that I'm really flattered and I don't take it lightly at all when you reach out to me and ask me what kind of modeler you should get or how to make your guitar tone better. But I think there's this huge misconception that the only way you can get good tone is through pro gear. And that's just not true. The reality is that good guitar tone is made up of a lot of different components. His thumb. The bones could be. Oh, was it his gum? I don't know. A dead man's bun. Dead man's buns. And really, it all starts with these. Look, you could have the same exact gear as, insert your favorite guitar player's name here, and you just aren't going to sound like them. And that's the reality of the situation, is that a huge part of your tone is made up by how you play guitar. You, as an individual, how you play guitar. So while I think it's a lot of fun to do like tone questing videos to try and sound like certain bands or certain guitar players, in reality, it's just not possible because you're different than them. I'm different than them. And in my opinion, that's a huge part of being a guitar player, is finding your own identity. What are you? I'm Batman. Let me tell you a little bit about why I chose the Axe FX, and it has nothing to do with guitar tone. I was really happy with my guitar tone when I was using a GE200. So that should tell you something right there, if I can get a tone that I'm really happy with using a small, inexpensive floor modeler. The reason that I went with the Axe FX3 is because it has the horsepower and the functionality to be able to reamp all of the backing tracks that I run with my band. And not only that, but I incorporate MIDI switching with my Axe FX, so it's super convenient to have all the instruments running through one unit, because that way, when the MIDI triggers scene changes, it happens for all of the instruments, and it's not something that I have to try and sync up through a bunch of different devices. So for me, the Axe FX was all about convenience and optimizing my band's live rig just to make it as easy as possible on myself since I'm the only guitar player in the band. And if you want more details on my live rig, I'll link this video up here. That's something I actually need to make an updated video on because I get questions about my live rig all the time. But um, that should answer most of your questions for the time being. So back to guitar playing being in your hands. I'll give you an example on how this makes a difference, and this really applies to bass as well. For example, when you're palm muting and you want those chugs to be super loud and present, you really have to aggressively pick your strings with a heavy pick. Real bassists never use pick. I mean, if you're not, that big, full, powerful sound just isn't going to translate the same way no matter what gear you own. And another example is working on your left hand technique and making sure your notes are clean. Because no amount of gear is going to clean up your note definition if you don't have good technique in the first place. Now don't get me wrong, Fractal's Axe FX line, and especially the Axe FX 3, are amazing pieces of gear. They can do a ton of different stuff. I mean, you can get in there and you can tweak every single parameter of your amplifier and even add parameters that the original amps that are being emulated don't have. In the name of God, now I know what it feels like to be God. And you can truly get any tone that I think you can imagine out of one if you know how to use it. And to be honest with you guys, I don't even scratch the surface on what this thing can do. The amp switcher controls the rate of the Earth's revolution. Um, this one controls many people die in a minute around the world. It has functionality that's way over my head, and it's not stuff I use. Um, this one controls how hot the sun is. Like I said, the main reason that I bought it is for convenience and workflow. And I get the feeling that most people that ask me about their guitar tone or like what gear they should buy are probably like beginner to intermediate players. And if that's you and you're still figuring out your sound and the things you like, I think you can get a lot more mileage out of something that's easier to use, like a plugin or like one of the inexpensive modelers that I'm always shooting out on my channel. You could probably get a lot more mileage and be less overwhelmed having something like that that is more aimed towards, you know, the beginner to intermediate player. 
I mean, like I told you guys earlier, I was stoked on the tone that I had with my GE200 and I didn't see anything wrong with it. The only reason that I ever switched from the GE200 to the Ampero was because of the MIDI switching and then from the Ampero to the Axe FX3 was so that I could run all of the backing tracks through one unit. But to any of you guys who have your hearts set on an Axe FX3, I don't want to disparage you and I don't want to talk you out of it. It is an amazing piece of gear that will provide you with endless hours of tone questing fun, even if it takes forever, if that's what you're going for. And to all of you that ask me for advice on tone and gear, first off, I just want to say thank you. It means a lot to me that you would even ask me for those suggestions in the first place. And my answer to you guys is always going to be the same. Find the gear that does what you want it to do that is in your budget. Because at the end of the day, I think there are so many good pieces of gear out there and the marketplace is so competitive that I think you're gonna be happy with tones that you can generate from any of those pieces of gear. Whether it's something like a micro preamp pedal or a multi effects unit like a Helix or a GE product or even like an FM8, you're probably only going to end up using a handful of things that those devices are capable of and be perfectly happy with any one of them. And I know that's not the answer most people want. Most people want me to tell them like, but that's just not my answer because it's not for everybody. And I don't think that there's a piece of gear that I've ever reviewed that I think just fits the bill for everybody. I think that every guitar player has different needs when it comes to things like, what do you need this piece of gear to do at your band practice? Or what do you need this piece of gear to do in a live situation? Or what do you need this piece of gear to do in the studio or at home when you're making demos? And those things are far more important and outweigh the slight differences that you're going to hear in tones between any of the units that I've ever reviewed. You can't tell the difference in the dark. Real quick, I wanna give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. You are greatly appreciated. And if you're interested in joining my Patreon account, there's links in the description below. Patrons get cool stuff like exclusive content and access to a private section on my Discord server, which also, if you're interested in joining my Discord server, there's a link to that in the description below as well. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.